Hey ladies, I'm your host Rebecca and my goal is to lead women towards faith and confidence through the bumpy roads of life. Welcome to the She Bold Podcast. Hi everyone, I hope you're all having a blessed day. Today's officially the first episode of this podcast and I gotta say I'm grateful that God has called me to reach the women out there who are looking for answers or advices to help them through whatever season they're in. So let's get to it. Episode number one is stop running from your calling. You're probably wondering why I decided to go with this one first. Well, to be honest, it's because that's what I've been doing. For many, many years, I've been running from my calling and God has been running after me. And here I am today, finally answering and being as consistent as I can be. So the first point that I would say for this subject is how to discover what you're called to do. I know that sometimes it may seem easier than we think, but always, always seek God first, okay? And ask him to speak to you in a way that you won't miss his advice. Everyone has their own way of communication with God, I know, but in a sense that the way he reveals something to me is not going to be the same way for someone else. And there's people he will put on your path that are meant to align you, but you have to be careful. Not everyone's advice are meant for you and you have to have the discernment to know which ones to keep and which ones to put aside. And why am I saying put aside and not just ignore it or throw it away? It's because to be honest, every advice has a purpose. That's how I see it. Um, It may not be for your current season, but it might become important for another season in your life or It may not be linked to your life, but it might be linked to someone else's life that you'll meet down the road or someone that you already know. You never know. So that advice might have no effect to you, but it might change someone's life someday. So always pay attention to those. And another thing that I would add to that is check the pattern in your life. As a child, what were you often doing when you grew up? um, What character you kept or habit that you kept from your childhood and the best way to know is to ask the people who were around you so that means your parents your siblings anyone that saw you while you were growing up and for example me as a child I kept being bossy around the house my parents tell me I've always wanted to take control be like in a leadership mode and I am the youngest of a family of seven, which means like five children, two parents. So just imagine how that worked out. Obviously, that was a big fail as a child, but that was just to explain to you how the pattern were already there as a young age. However, when I grew up um, around elementary school and beginning of high school, I was hiding myself a lot and I became so shy and not social at all people don't believe me when I say that but trust me it's true like if you ask someone who saw me around that age they will confirm to you I couldn't even look people in the eye so anyways um that was my extreme the extreme opposite of what I was as a child right but then as the time went by the influence of friends came in of course And I ended up coming out of my shy shell. And from that moment, for some reason, I became a therapist to so many people. Friends were constantly coming to me to vent, um, for advice, for guidance. And it's not even because I was living my life righteously. Like, not at all. Um, But even strangers or people I just met, within the first day, they open up to me and tell me their whole life. And to be honest... For many years, I did not understand why I kept wondering, like, what is it about me that people feel so comfortable to come to me and talk about their deepest problems, right? But as my relationship with God grew deeper over time, I started to understand all these patterns and God started to reveal to me that he has called me to become a leader and especially for women. So... Think about those patterns in your life. The answer might be closer closer than you think. And also try to listen to yourself. Maybe you keep having similar visions or of yourself, but I think that, you know, 
you might think that it's too out of reach or something like that. But remember, you're not meant to be like anyone else. Everyone's calling is different. Maybe you will be the first one in your circle or in your family walking down that path. And it's okay because God will still protect you and he will still help you through it. And that reminds me also of the verse that everyone knows that we all know because we've been seeing it for years because that was the easiest verse to, to remember. Um, but that part I was saying, even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid for you are close beside me. And as much as I read that verse thousands of times while growing up, this year I was listening to a sermon. I wish I could remember who the pastor was, but I remember that he made me see it from a different perspective. And that's another thing I love about God because the Bible is there. We read it. But every time we understand it a different way, we could read the same verse 50 times. And those 50 times, we're going to see it from a different perspective. Or also, depending on the season you're going through right now, you might understand it from a way that other people don't um, see it, if I could say it like that. So anyways, um, so what he mentioned about that first, he specified how it is written that we're walking through the valley. We're not chilling in it. We're not sitting in it. We're not running and we're not stopping in it. We are walking. So that bumpy road or that bumpy season you have to go through to bring you to that calling, it might be darker than you think or darker, darker than you envisioned it, but you need to walk through it in faith. But don't give up. Be steady. Continue to do what you're supposed to do. And it's also mentioned that God is always close to you, even through that dark valley. So he never said that it's going to be sunshine every single day in your life. And especially when it comes to your calling, you always have to remember the enemy is going to do everything that he can to stop that calling from happening. So obviously the road, that valley is not going to be a smooth one. But you just need to keep your focus on God and you just need to focus on the fact that this calling is not about you, but it's about doing God's will. And God's will is about his kingdom. It's about more than just you because you answering that calling might save so many lives out there that you don't even know. So just don't stop there and just continue to walk, okay? And another thing, number two, what I would say actually, so number one, was how to discover what you're called to do, right? Number two, I would say how to accept it. So don't think that things went smooth and easy from the moment that I understood what I was called to do. It actually went the opposite way. Um, how can I say that? So I'm an introvert, okay? People see me talking and laughing in the social settings and they think that I'm super comfortable, but inside I'm low-key suffering because be, being around people and even family members, it just drains me. And I often need a few days off alone after friends or a family event. And in another episode, I will talk about the good and the bad of being a Christian introvert because yes, there is bad sides and there is good sides. So if you can relate to that, stay up to date for that episode. I just think that it's very important to understand our personalities because being an introvert or an extrovert, it has to do with the way your brain is wired. So it's not even something you choose to become. It's something you're born with. So I think it's important to just see it not only from a worldly perspective, but really as a Christian. Um, so yeah, we'll talk to, we'll talk about that in another episode. So when I knew that this is what God called me to do, and it was going to be a long-term thing, I felt great to finally have the revelation, but I started to panic because I did not think that I could handle it. You know when for your whole life you wait for an answer, and then you finally have it, but you didn't expect it to be that? Like, I knew I could talk to people and give advice, but thinking about doing it every single day, it seems like a big weight on my shoulders. And 
the more and more time I tried to ignore it, the more and more people came to me. And over the time, they, they just started to thank me and telling me that I have no idea how much their advice were important to them and their current season or for a specific decision or a life change. And that's what made me realize that despite my introvert side, I have a big heart for people and I'm sensitive to people around me. Knowing that I can make them smile or make them stop crying, it just gives me peace. And knowing that the effect of me doing this is peace makes me understand that it's truly God because only God can give you that kind of feeling. And God knows that when he requires us to do something, we're not always going to say yes right away. But it doesn't stop him from pushing it over and over again until we finally get it. And he is not going to give up. <laughs> Nothing going to stop his will from happening. Not even us being hard-headed. We often think that we lack of something to become successful or to fit in a specific calling but God never said that he made us incomplete he said that he already gave us everything that we need to achieve what he called us to do therefore if he's calling you to do something he already put all the seeds needed inside of you now it's your turn to water them with his help of course so they can start growing and flourishing more and more sometimes we look for external things but we forget that it all starts within first. So get to know yourself. Look inside. Who are you and what is your identity in Christ? And my point number three, which I'm going to hand with this one, is how to achieve it. It's going to be pretty short and simple. Any step is good. Big or small, you just have to start somewhere. Even if it's just writing ideas, brainstorming, or, I don't know, creating a logo, do something and then do something else and it will come to life over time. God never said he will leave you alone. He's going to be there, but you need to do your part while he does his. So stop running and start being obedient and just do it one step at a time. All right, ladies. So thank you for listening and make sure to share this message to anyone out there that God has put in your heart. Stay blessed.